Mike Dillon would make his first foray into full-bodied stock cars at Concord Speedway in the early 1990s in the street stock division. Eventually moving up to NASCAR's late model stock car division, he would begin to show his prowess at short tracks throughout North Carolina. Claiming 11 wins in the series in 1994, as well as taking home notable victories at North Wilkesboro Speedway in 1994 and 95. Dillon would make his Bush Series debut in 1995, making five starts that season for his father-in-law, Richard Childress. He would sign on with Ron Parker and Parker Racing for the 1996 season to wheel the team's number 72 car, earning his first career top 10 finish at South Boston Speedway that June. By the time Bush Series teams pulled into Hickory Motor Speedway in April of 1998 for their final trip to the legendary .363 mile oval, Dillon had made 63 starts on the tour, having earned eight top tens, including his first career top five having come at Dover the previous September. Having been the site of his series debut and a facility he was very familiar with, Dillon would qualify fifth for the Galaxy Food Center's 300. Row three, there's the guy they call Hurricane locally, buddy, Mike Dillon. If they said he'd come in here in 1994 and started winning races, he won five and went on about his business. They call him the Hurricane. Come in, left, and he made a big impression. Stick around. Ready? Should be a good afternoon. You ready? Clearing green. Green flag. He would make his way up to third by the time Andy Houston would spin in turn four on lap 43, bringing out the first caution. Staying on track, he would remain in third for the lap 50 restart. Presley. Outside with a follower. Presley Outside. has to go. Ed Barry is closing in in the 77, and just behind them, um, Bill Bill Dillon, Mike Dillon's moved yeah. in there at the 72 in third place. And Bill Parsons as well. A large pileup involving eight cars would occur in turn two on lap 59, bringing out the second yellow. Dillon would get around Robert Presley in the fracas, racing back to the line. Let's go to Steve Burns. And we just walked into the crew, uh, crew chief position here. Dean Johnson is with Mike Dillon. Well, you guys are having a great run. Did you make any adjustments today? No, we left the car like it was when we actually uh, tested here the other day. Uh, it was real cloudy yesterday. And, uh, going to leave it for the sunshine deal. What is Mike saying about the way the car's handling? Yeah, he says we're pretty good right now. We're just trying to be patient and have something left for that last 50 laps. All right, thanks, Dean. Thank you. There's Hurricane and Mike Dillon side by side. Phil Parsons also out there riding around. Getting set to go back to green. All those cars on the inside are a lap down as they take green, off. Green, green flag. There, really brought them down to a slow restart there, and he takes the lead back going into turn one right there. Racing hard with Robert Presley to maintain the second spot, they would make contact on lap 94, sending Presley around and causing six cars to pile in in turn one. This caution would butt up against the scheduled lap 100 race break, where teams would make non-competitive pit stops due to the limited real estate on Hickory's pit road. Dillon would take advantage to make a stop, lining back up in second when the action resumed on lap 101. You notice this restart here was a single file restart after the competition yellow, so they don't have any lap cars to deal with. There you see Robert Presley going right to work on Mike Dillon right from the beginning here. That is for second spot. The leader is Ed Barrier. Robert Presley having to deal with and Mike Dillon now, Glenn. Well, basically, you know, the same thing he was dealing with before the caution, except they all got fresh tires on. Dillon's crew told me they did not change a thing except the four tires. Gave him a pat on the back, congratulated him on that great save, and sent him back out. No changes at all. You know, one comment I got to make. This is a 300 lap race. Look at what we've dealt with in the first 100 laps. Will there be any cars left? <laughs> McLaughlin is out there while we watch this battle for the lead. McLaughlin's dragging some sheet metal out there. And he's going to be coming back onto the pit lane to uh, get rid of that sheet metal. After a fierce battle with Ed Barrier, Dylan would eventually prevail, taking over the race lead on lap 140. Unfortunately, a severe power outage in the area would wipe out TNN's feed and any footage of the middle portion of the event. Dylan would stay out front for 54 laps during this time before Barrier was able to get back by. 
Welcome back, everybody. We are with you live at lap number 200 here at the Hickory Motor Speedway. Eli Gold and Buddy Baker joining you now from the Star Catcher. This is TNN Satellite Uplink Truck, which is one of the only vehicles here at the Speedway that has power in it right now. There has been a major power outage that services the entire uh, broadcast area and the uh, downstairs section, if you will, of the Hickory Motor Speedway. And that's why we left you before and have now just been able to get a picture up. We've got one cameraman, Wayne Womack, who's manning the single camera that we do have functional right now. And you see the race leader. That is Ed Barrier, the number 77 machine. He took the race lead a short while ago. Why don't we recap for you right now what you have missed. These are the pit stops taking place at the second competition caution. Ed Barrier had given the lead over to Mike Dillon and Dillon held the lead until just a few laps ago when it was reassumed by Ed Barrier. We had a very brief caution for a spin. Jason Jarrett spun, brought out a caution, and Elton Sawyer, just prior to this break here at lap number 200, had a continuation of an ongoing smoking problem. He went down the pit lane at the same time that they brought out this competition caution at lap number 200. Welcome back, everybody. We are live at Hickory Motor Speedway. Again, if you're just tuning in, the race, the Galaxy Foods 300, now at lap 202. We'll give you a rundown in just a moment, but on the restart, 77 is Ed Barrier, 72 as he has been running all day long. Mike Dillon, a solid run. The seventh caution of the day would occur on lap 209 after an incident involving Andy Houston, Dick Trickle, and Jason Keller occurred in turn one. Restarting from second on lap 214, he would challenge Barrier for the lead once again. See Mike Dillon there making a move on Ed Barrier coming off turn two as they head down the back straightaway and Robert Presley in the 59 running in third as they head down into turn three. And on the outside there, Kevin Grubb is really doing a great job today. Now Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on the tail end of the lead lap. He had made up a lap earlier, now made up that one. And look at Robert Presley, fourth car on the screen there, still smoking. That 59 number, uh, the red, white, and blue car. That is first, second, and third, the 77 barrier, 72 Dillon, and Presley still smoking. Jeff Krogh's spin in turn two on lap 224 would bring out the eighth caution. Dillon would remain in second when the action resumed on lap 231. Barrier would tangle with Randy LaJoy, exiting turn four on lap 234, causing a violent crash. Dillon would narrowly miss getting collected as the race would slow for the ninth time. The caution would develop into a red flag period after Kevin Grubb, one of the drivers collected in the accident, would have an incident on pit road under the yellow. You see where that ambulance is. After Randy LaJoy and Kevin Grubb had their problems on the racetrack, Grubb apparently came down pit road, and from what we are told, his brakes locked up, and he crashed into one of the toolboxes down there, and Todd Wilkerson, who was a crew member, fell off the toolbox and hurt his wrist and his arm, and as a result, NASCAR has thrown the red flag. Once the dust settled, the race would resume on lap 242. No adjustments on the 72, and we're going green. Going green after a red flag of 10 minutes and 22 seconds. Mike Dillon in second in the 72 car. He has really, really run a great race today. Max Barrier shows a lot of uh, good experience on this type of racetrack, though. Runs the line very well through the corner. After losing a spot to Matt Kenseth early in the run, he would begin to close back in. Now what, did Kenseth just save this, or, or is the track coming to him now here as the shadows grow longer? Eli, he has that ability to, to drive his race car and not overextend the tires. He has the feeling his background is on a racetrack just like his. He's very talented, and right now Mike Dillon's coming back to him. Mark Green would bring out the 10th and final caution of the day on lap 280 after suffering a right front tire failure entering turn one. The race would restart for the final time with 11 laps to go. Matt Kenseth would struggle to get going, allowing Dillon to retake the second spot. Unfortunately, his car would develop a tight condition and the handling would fade severely on the run to the checkers. 13 to go. Out there in the mix as well. There you see second place, 72. Dillon, Hermie Sadler, who was inside of the 29. As he looked from Dick Trickle backwards towards Dillon. You can see Hermie Sadler making a move as they head down into turn one there. Hermie Sadler pulls even with Dillon. He's losing that spot. 
quickly to Glenn Jarrett. In the 72 pits, and uh, Mike's car, he's reporting it got very, very tight. Only one could have a tire going down the cause that. Chris Fiedewa just gave him a big shot in the rear, so he may have trouble holding off Fiedewa for third. Ed Barrier, who began a NASCAR Bush Series racing in 1984. Mike Denman loses the spot to Tim, Tim Fiedewa there. Ultimately, he would cross the line in fourth, as Barrier would hold on to earn his first and only series victory. Dillon would move on to drive the 59 car for ST Motorsports for the 1999 season, and then to the newly minted number 21 team for Richard Childress Racing in 2000. He would shift into a part-time development role for the team in 2001, making his final career starts. After hanging up his helmet, having earned 15 career top 10 and three top 5 finishes, Dillon would move up into a leadership role at RCR, where he's been able to see both of his sons become winners at the national touring levels of NASCAR. Mike Dillon was a competitive driver in his own right and has carved out a successful career on the executive end of the business. And on one Saturday afternoon in the spring of 1998, he nearly etched his name into the history books.